I'm Yana and I'm here at the Children's Hospital and I'm so excited to be here on Juice TV. I've been coming into hospital since I was 11 and a half months old, which is when I got nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a kidney disorder where my immune system attacks my own kidneys, so my immune system is really low. I relapsed so I came into hospital, but I've had a lot of fun since I came here. Before I go, I'd love to give a very big special shout out to my family. I love that my family is so supportive and they're always here for me. My favourite thing about being in hospital is being with them, so it definitely makes having nephrotic syndrome not so bad. See you later. and I'm here to present a special guest today. Can I ask you all to give a warm welcome to celebrity chef and food ambassador, Matt Galinsky. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming along, Yana. Thank you. It's such a <laughs> pleasure to have you. Um, I love cooking myself. What made you want to become a chef? Um, look, I... Wanted to, I decided I wanted to be a chef when I was eight years old. I just turned 50 this year, so it's been... And I still want to be a chef, so that's good news. But I grew up... I, I grew up surrounded by good food. I grew up on a farm, and, I, and I, my life as a child was just wandering about, picking stuff off trees and eating it. So I was... I think I put that down to being my, my great inspiration, wanting to be a chef, and, and why... And I... And I Every day, even still now, 42 years later, I still find ingredients that I haven't tried before and I'm always excited to try new stuff. So it's a never-ending learning curve my whole life. That's amazing. Do you think it's good for kids to get involved with cooking and learning about food? Yeah, I think it really is. And I think um, it's, it's good from a health point of view, but it's also good... It's a, it's, a, it's a giving thing. When you're cooking for somebody, you know when you make something for... You bake a cake for somebody that you love then you're giving a part of yourself to them and and to, to to have that experience as a kid to be to start when you're a kid makes it a part of your life that you understand that it's it's a wonderful sharing thing to to be able to do do you think that food can change the way that we feel oh definitely in more ways than one i think food can can change uh, food, food makes you healthy. If you eat good food, it makes you healthy, it makes you physically well, but it also makes you happy. My whole job, as far as I'm concerned, as, as a chef now, is to cook food for people. But my, the, the main goal at the beginning of the day when I go to work and I walk into the kitchen and I start preparing food and then people come in and order it and I serve it to them, my main goal is to make people happy. You know, and that's a pretty special thing. If that's your job, every day you get to go to work and make people happy. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you fail, <laughs> but you've got to accept that. You know, sometimes it doesn't work out, um, and you accept that, and you and you you own it. Um, but it's yeah, it's a it's a beautiful thing to be involved in. You've got some pretty cool ingredients. What are you making today? What's that? Sorry. What are you going to make today? Well, I didn't want to set the, the sprinklers off in here today, so I decided not to actually cook anything. I thought I'd just make something that I've been doing um, with. A lot of kids around the place, I actually did it with 466 kids at Jones Hill Primary School a couple of weeks ago, um, and after that I needed to lie down for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> it went from grade sevens all the way down all day until I got to the preppies and they were this big and they were all there's rice paper rolls going everywhere. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's something that, it's the sort of dish that I would make at home. So, and it's a good way to get a whole lot of different vegetables into one little morsel. Well, off to you to get started. Okay, thanks, Yana. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm very aware that running behind time and the chefs in the conference kitchen will be going, they said that it was 12.30 for lunch. So I'm not going to take ages with this. Um, but this is something that, um, like I said, I, I've been cooking since I was eight years old. My, my folks... Um, we lived in a suburban house in Sunnybank, and when I was six, my folks said, no, nope, that's it, we're moving to the Sunshine Coast, we're buying a 30-acre banana farm. Um, it had bananas, and it had mangoes, and it had avocados, and macadamias, and um, pawpaws, and so that's what I grew up with as a kid. And I, re I remember the moment that I, you know, I decided, I said to my folks, I'm going to I'm going to be a chef. That's what I want to do with my life. And, and I didn't change that feeling from, you know, from my whole, throughout my whole life. By the time I got to high school, I was desperate to get into high school and do cooking as a subject. And the first six months, of course, was sewing, wasn't it? 
<laughs> so I was devastated. Um, and I still haven't finished my pair of shorts because <laughs> I'm so upset um, by that. Now, um, like I said, this is something that I do with kids a lot. And it's really nice to, to have Yana here. And that to, it always makes me so happy when I see kids excited about food. And I've been working a lot with kids over the last few years um, in schools. And I was at Beanley High School last week. Um, cook, I spent a couple of days in the kitchen with the kids there. And I spend a lot of time down at Beanley High. I love going there. Um, and we did a five-course degustation for six, 60 people um, over two days. And the, so whenever I show up to a school like that, I'm doing that sort of thing. If you're from a school, don't come and ask me to do it, okay, because I'm not doing it, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> But this is, it's, it, you, the, 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 first, the moment I arrive, they're all nervous and, and everything else and, and they, they don't have great skills or anything like that. They don't have great knife skills. I don't care about that. What I say to them, first thing I say is, let's have fun. This is, should be a fun thing. Cooking should be a fun thing. Kids watch, they watch Gordon Ramsay. They all know who Gordon Ramsay is. You know, they all, they've all watched MasterChef and what they see, what's, so that's their role model. So... When I was a kid, my role model was Peter Russell Clark five minutes before the goodies, right? <laughs> That's what I grew up with, and he looked like he was having fun. Um, but, you know, and so that's, you know, that's, that, was, that was my role model as a chef. That's all I knew. That was the only celebrity chef that was available to me at the time. Now they watch TV and they watch MasterChef and they see people bursting into tears because their 38-layer chocolate cake didn't work out. Or, you know, they see Gordon Ramsay yelling at people, oh, you're an idiot. So that, that's what they think cooking is. Um, so to me, whenever I work with kids now, it's I, I want you to have fun. This is, what, this is what I love doing. I, you know, I, the amount of 15 hour days that I do in a kitchen, but I, and I love every minute of it. Um, I don't, you know, don't consider it a burden. I think that's maybe where we need to change the, the narrative of cooking is that it's making dinner for yourself. Oh, you want to make dinner. Oh, can't we just ring Uber Eats and get something? No, make it so that it's actually an enjoyable thing. Um, and like I said before, it's a giving thing, it's a, it's a sharing. And this is what I love about this thing that I'm going to make for you now and the simplest thing in the world, is that it's, it's a sharing thing. This is something that when I, when I made the, this with the kids at Jones Hill School, I just had a platter with all carrot sticks, a platter with all celery sticks, cucumber, capsicum, roast chicken, you know, all the different vegetables, celery, everything else. And then and I said to them, so who doesn't like capsicums? And then, you know... 12 kids put their hands up, well, don't put capsicum in it. You have more carrots in it than, than that. And so th all of a sudden, they're in charge of their food. And that's something that you can do at, you know, at, f at home around the family table. You put a platter of vegetables and stuff on the, on the table, you have a bowl of water, you have rice papers, and you make your own dinner. You know? And it's a nice, healthy thing to do. Get loads of vegetables into it. Um, and... You know, and it's cheap and it's easy and you can put whatever you want into it. It doesn't have to be um, chicken or it can be tin tuna, so it's already in the, in the cupboard. It can be, you know, tofu, it can be beef, it can be anything really. Um, and it can be whatever you happen to have in the, in the fridge, in the crisper. Um, I've got, you know, I've got snow peas here, I've got asparagus, things that are in season, asparagus... I've got a five-year-old daughter, and I've just moved from very, very... I consider myself to be a very lucky man. I've got two little daughters. One of them is five, and she loves gardening. She's got her own flower garden. But we've got asparagus growing at the moment. We've got strawberries have just finished, and blueberries have just started. Um, we've got mulberries on the tree at the moment. And, um, and she's living the life that I grew up with now. So, and she, you know, as much as I don't want her to be a chef, I want her to be a doctor so she can look after me in my old age... <laughs> It's, it's, it's so, so nice to be able to give that to her as well um, and, you know, and see the actual action of an asparagus spear growing. It's quite, it's quite surreal to walk to the garden where there wasn't one yesterday and there's this little guy just standing there like that, you know, and it just comes out of the soil. It's the weirdest looking plant in the world. Um, but such a beautiful thing for, for her to grow up with. I think that's, it, that's a message as well um, that I consider to be important with kids is, and, and something that I've seen a lot um, 
in the last, you know, in my time working in different schools and things like that, is if they've got a school, school kitchen garden, all of a sudden they're, they're engaged in what food actually is, how it grows. Those, they've gone out into the garden and planted those radish seeds and watched them come up as little sprouts and then they grow into a radish. And I've seen little kids like this big pulling a radish out of the garden, wiping the dirt off on their shirt and eating it. And you're not going to get a kid to you go to the shop and buy a packet of radishes and go, here, Johnny, eat some radishes. They're not going to do it. But if they grew it themselves, they're going to be interested in it. So um, and one of the things I tell the kids when, whenever I'm doing this is like, the secret to this guy's making a good rice paper roll is just don't overload it. And then they come up and go, <laughs> rolling this big thing like that. That never works. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it's... This, this is the beauty of this is I think it's very important as well like that kids know how food's grown so that they respect it, they don't waste it. In fact, adults for that sake, um, we waste far too much food. Um, and so it's, it, you know, if you grow a capsicum, <laughs> it takes forever and it's, and it's hard. It's hard to grow food. It's, it takes time. So many different things can go wrong along the way. Hail not enough water, too much water, too cold, too hot, you name it. You can get it when, you, when you're growing stuff. Um, so if you've grown it yourself, then you're way more li less likely to, to waste it. Um, I've got some, I'm just putting everything in here. I'm like one of the prep kids from Jones Hill School. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, even touching food, understanding food, how it works, like that, you know, how does, how how to take the skin off an avocado, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, um, it's, in, it's interesting, isn't it? See, I, sh I wish I'd brought the capsicum now whole because that's one that everyone goes, oh, that's how you cut a capsicum up. You cut the ends off and then you make a line down the middle of the capsicum or down the side of the capsicum and then it just all folds out and you've got one big rectangle like that. You can do whatever you want with it. Turn it into, you know, s squares, rectangles, parallelograms, whatever you like. Um, and so, yeah, it's about sort of feel, getting to feel food and, and realising that it's actually not scary. Um, Gordon Ramsay's not going to come in and yell at you if you do it wrong. Um, these little guys here, these are one of my favourite, very favourite snacks, and this is um, sunflower seeds that are just dry roast in a pan, just dry roast, dry roast, no oil, no nothing, and then it's, once they start to get all nutty and golden, you just hit them with a little bit of, of soy sauce and they suck it up and they go crunchy again. They go dry. And then that's like the perfect snack. Um, I, I, when I was a kid, my mum was pretty healthy. When I was a kid, mum used to pack sunflower seeds into my lunchbox for me. And I hated them. I used to swap them for, to, with other kids for other things because they were raw. And so they kind of hadn't had developed any flavour. But these are like, I can just sit in front of the TV and eat handfuls of those. And, um, you know, health and well-being Queensland, yes, I do use the low solid sodium soy sauce, obviously. <laughs> um, you know, th this is another thing. You know, my, I've got a five-year-old. I can say to her, go out and pick me some rosemary, some, um, some f par flat parsley and some mint. And she knows what all of them are. Getting kids to smell things, getting them to know what, what they look like, how they feel. You know, nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are just finishing their season at the moment. We've watched them come up and grow. But this was my childhood. Nipping the end off, sucking the nectar out of them. Do you guys do that? There's so many kids I, I, I show that to. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but teenagers aren't very interested in very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, use, I use my... Um, I do my own commentary usually when I'm teaching them something interesting. I say, so yeah, so what you can do is you take the end off and then you suck the nectar out. And then I go, wow, that was amazing, Matt. Thank you so much for teaching us that interesting fact. That's incredible. <laughs> because they're not going to do it. The, <laughs> the thing is, though, that they do. I, I'll go and do something like that, where, like Beanley, where I spend two days with them. And I watch them change over those two days. So they go from being timid and not very interested to being at the time when we're serving those five courses to 60 people, they're excited and they're proud of themselves and they, they're enjoying what they do. Um, so that's that. And then 
This is another thing that I like, little experiment that I like to try and get into their heads as well. Most of them love going to Macca's or whatever and getting their burgers and stuff like that. And I, I try to explain to them that there's a reason for that, you know, that, that we crave that and there's a way that we can create that sort of, that ourselves. It's what our taste buds crave. It's salty and it's sour and it's sweet and all those things. And if you get those in the right combination, that's what a, you know, a Big Mac is. It's sweet bun and salty, fatty burger and the, um, the sour pickles and all those things go together. If, you have one of the, if you're missing one of those elements, then all of a sudden it's not such a tasty burger. Get all those in the right combination and all of a sudden your taste buds come alive. And that's why when you think about it, you go, oh yeah, I could go, go for some of that. Um, so you can create that yourself by having, say, soy sauce, salty, rice vinegar, sour, something like honey, which is sweet, and you mix all those things together. Have to put honey on the shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it's exactly the same with, say, a Thai curry, fish sauce, lime juice, palm sugar. Those three combinations, that's why a Thai curry is so hard to stop eating, because those things go together so beautifully. So, and, and that's what makes you, you know, that's what makes our taste buds come alive and wh why we crave that sort of thing. Um, I'm just putting, there's some sesame oil in there now, and so that's gonna give us like that nuttiness. And then we've got, you know, something that's simple, but it's not um, a sweet and sour sauce in a little plastic container that you don't know what's in it, the emulsifiers and all sorts of horrible stuff, you've made it with four ingredients that you know exactly what's in them. Um, and, and it's so simple, you know, and it's cheap. Um, what else I gonna, was I gonna tell you guys? I think that's pretty much, um, pretty much it, but I, I'd, love to, I'd be interested in any questions that you guys have. Um, I, um, yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything as far as, you know, kids and... Okay. If I could say anything about um, what, what I think's, you know, the importance of this and growing food and all that sort of thing, uh, taking, you know, if there's one thing we can do to, to, to get kids to understand food a little bit better, there's community gardens everywhere now, there's school kitchen gardens, but there's also like farm, farm tour days, open days, at, up where I come from, up in Gympie region, there's, there's farm trails where you can go from strawberry farm to the egg farm to the macadamia farm. And you take, all those, take kids out to those, you know, even adults are amazed by that. How, how a strawberry plant, pick a strawberry plant straight from a bush and all of a sudden you, you understand the strawberries. Um, you understand what's involved in, in growing those. Any questions? Um, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think probably giving them some, uh, giving kids uh, some ownership of the food, like with something like that, where they get to make it themselves and put in the stuff that they want, they like and they don't like. Um, it, I think, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, if they make it themselves, then they if they, or, and then if they grow it themselves, then they're more likely to eat it. I, it's, that's, what I, that's my experience, that's what I've seen going around to schools and working with kids. Um, it's interesting that, you know, like I was saying, the Bean Lee last, last week there, and I'm doing, I'm not doing mainstream stuff at all, I'm doing interesting stuff where I'm using eggplant and fennel and things that those kids go, ah, oh, yuck, and then by the end of it, they're eating it because they've spent two days preparing it with me and they're actually interested in then what it tastes like and it looks good on the plate so they're all of a sudden they wow, better try some of that. I go, oh, that's actually really good. So um, I don't think there's any particularly easy way. It's all about, I guess, you know, um, getting them un to understand how how important it is to you know to be healthy. It's to to be healthy for their minds and their bodies. Yeah, I go guess. Yeah, I I always try and lead by example in those situations where if I'm in the kitchen with them, I'm having fun, they see me having fun, they go, oh, maybe this is a fun thing to do, um, they, and then they want to do it, so, yeah. Yes? Are there programs in the schools here that teach children how to 
in the school system itself, how to snack and cook and, I mean, we used to call it home ec, but they yeah. didn't, one of the things they didn't teach us was how to cook. They taught us how to sew, how to type, mm -hmm. but it seems like this would be a wonderful... Yeah, it's something that's becoming more and more common, and it's a connection there between the in schools where there's a lot of schools that are taking the time to put in school kitchen gardens. And, the, and off to the side of that is then the, the, seeing the whole process through. It's probably not quite there as much as it should be yet, but a lot of it's popping up all over the place. And it's not only, um, it, it's good for kids who often who aren't great being in the classroom, being in, out in an outside environment and, you know, and growing stuff changes them as well. Yes. And it is a great program. Yeah, I've been involved in that. Yeah. Any other questions for Matt? One, oh, we've got one up the top. You'll have to yell out for me. Up there? Oh, me. Hello. Um, I've been a fan of yours for years. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Um, please tell me what you did with that avocado. <laughs> <laughs> what I did with it? <laughs> oh, to get the skin off. Okay. <laughs> Watch very closely. Can we get a close up? So basically, I'll just a sharp knife, run it down that way, and just so it's just through the skin. And then you peel that side off. It, de it depends on the avocado as well. Um, but this, this, I don't know what this one is, actually. It's not a hass. Um, but it just comes off like that, and then you've just got this pure. Whoa. I'm glad I came today. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's a great question. Oh, and the one that I absolutely love. Um, so, yes, th this is my, I brought, the, brought this new jacket. I finished my, my job at Pepper's Noosa yesterday. It was my last day there, so I can't wear their jackets anymore. So I had to go and buy new ones, obviously, and I don't want to get pomegranate juice on this jacket. So um, <laughs> it's a really good question. What I do is exactly what it's kind of what I did with the, the, um, the avocado, you run a knife, so an, a pomegranate is in five segments, and you can you run a knife around the skin like that. Hang on, let me think. You don't cut, you never cut a pomegranate in half, okay? So you, if you cut it, run a knife around the outside, a little paring knife, and then you prise the two halves apart, and then you've got two, you know, you don't break any seeds. As soon as you break a seed, you've got juice everywhere, okay? And then you get a bowl of water like this, and what I tend to do is, you can do it underwater. So you see it on TV shows, and they go, yeah, you grab your pomegranate, and you flip it upside down, and you smack the hell out of it with a wooden spoon, and then you've just got juice and seeds and things going everywhere. What I do is I just have a bowl of water, and you do it underwater. So you, you get the pomegranate, and you slowly prise out the seeds, and then what happens is all the pith rises to the top, and you can scoop it off, and all the seeds drop to the bottom. And you don't, because you're doing it underwater, you don't get covered in pink juice. We learned something, didn't we? Thank you very much. My work is done. I think, I think everybody was cutting it in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Matt Galinsky, and also Yana from Juice TV as well. And I think, is everybody hungry? Does anybody want the roll that he made? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to have a break for lunch um, now and we'll be back at about 1.45. So please come back at 1.45 to start the next panel sessions. And thank you, Matt Galinsky. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.